subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. Yo, this time with the iPhone 6, we covered the SE, we covered the 5S, the SE performing well, the 5S performing on par with iOS 11. Now, if you're noticing, I did replace my older gold iPhone 6 that got cracked finally here with a space gray model. Let's go ahead and boot this up in three, two, one. So this is actually a brand new, fresh iPhone 6 with a stock install of iOS 12, so it should be ready to go at its max performance here at least on beta 1. Now remember the iPhone 6 is a 1 gigabyte of RAM model with the Apple A8 CPU and there's actually a product that Apple still sells with the A8 CPU which would be that iPad mini that's still available until they officially drop that. But the iPhone 6 has been discontinued from Apple stores, but many people can still get them on Straight Talk Wireless. You can still get them at places like Boost Mobile. So they're still available as a prepaid handset. And you've seen there was the boot up to iOS 12. It took rather long, but not too long for being the price it is at this point. Okay, so one of the first things I want to take a look at is that camera performance on the lock screen, because one of the things we're going to do a lot of the times is go ahead and turn on our iPhone swipe over to take a quick picture so we don't miss that moment and i could tell you that it performs very well here so far on beta one as you've seen just very fast for the iphone 6 there on the lock screen camera so you're not missing a moment on the iphone 6 now is that camera up to par with a lot of the new phones no is it better than some budget phones like you know 100 phones you can get these days sure it's still a pretty good 8 megapixel camera but overall that camera on the lock screen is pretty good and touch id still about the same as you know the iphone 5s it might be a little bit faster with the animation just because it has a little bit of a better cpu so i feel like it's still pretty good here on the fingerprint scanner okay guys so quickly confirming that software you can see that we are running ios 12 version 16a 5288q so beta 1 beta 2 should be available around the 18th of june maybe around the 25th in that area but maybe we'll get a surprise launch today or tomorrow but i don't think it's going to happen for beta 2 but you can see we are on the official version now the first thing i want to talk about is just the general software and what i've thought about how it feels so you see that little drop down it always does that when i boot up the iphone 6 or the 5s it kind of just twitches a little bit there what i've noticed is just scrolling through your pages has always been smooth on iOS no matter what version you're on. This is never a problem because the grid is always smooth swiping through. Now, when you scroll up, this is pretty smooth as well. Control Center is a lot better on this beta one than it was on iOS 11 beta one, for example. This is, you know, probably on par with 11.4 or if not better in terms of performance. So that's pretty good for a first beta. And remember, we're only on the first beta here and it's looking pretty good in terms of its general UI performance. Now, if we go into like this, here's where you see a little bit of lag or stutter right there. When you do this, it always does that. It just it's just a little choppy there in comparison to a newer iPhone. For example, I have an iPhone 8 Plus here on Control Center and if we go ahead and tap in, you could see it's just a lot quicker on the newer iPhones, but that's not too bad on the six for being, you know, a four year old phone. So keep that in mind. It's a four year old phone. We wouldn't expect perfect performance, but I feel like this is something small that Apple could definitely get a little bit smoother here on the iPhone six. But that's one thing I noticed scrolling down from here. No, no problem on the notifications tray. So that's a good thing as well. And overall, the general UI performance is, you know, hopping through through pages, through control center, in settings. Everything is good on that front. I have no issues with it there. Okay, so welcome to the application portion of the speed test. Okay, so I usually just go through these kind of fast. And this one, I kind of want to run through some stuff in the applications to see how the performance is holding up. So if we go into calendar, for example, let's hit the year view. And you see there's a slight stutter there on the scroll. So, you know, this is going to probably get improved you know, the overall performance of all the Apple applications, but there's a slight stutter sometimes when scrolling in your calendar. If we go down here, let's go into home, for example, and click that. So everything works there just fine. Let's hit done to the to today view. And you can see working pretty good for your calendar. So what about calculator? Of course, the numbers are gonna work fine. Calculator is an easy app. What about camera? Scrolling through some different modes, you can see not bad 
So let's go over into photos, hit the filters. See how those work out. So the camera performing just fine. No delays really when it comes to the camera. So nice stuff. What about the settings menu? And let's go back here and just scroll through it. And you've seen that it's a little bit choppy. I mean, it's not perfectly smooth, but you know, this is beta one. And I, I think it's much better than beta one of last year on iOS 11. So let's go into the new news application for iOS 12. Let's go ahead and hit continue in just a second or let it prepare my news. Don't allow spotlight, for example. Just kind of see how this performs going through here. So, you know, while it's not the most instantaneous performance that you're going to get on some, you know, other smartphones, for example, the newer iPhones, it's still perfectly serviceable. So let's go into App Store and App Store. I found to take quite some time to load up in comparison to other applications. But once it does load again, it's pretty smooth. See the load time here, just a little bit longer than what you're going to find on newer phones. So you can see, but still I find it to be faster than the 5S on iOS 12. So pretty good there. Let's go into the Instagram and see how this performs as our first social media or third party application and third party apps still rather slow compared to newer devices. So going through, you can see that everything loads up just fine. You just have to be slightly patient with phones that are four years old. That's that's just all there is to it. You have to be slightly patient when it comes to these devices. But once you're in, everything seems to work just fine. You could type no lag on the keyboard there. So that's pretty good. Let's go into Twitter. And I'm actually having issues with logging in on Twitter for some reason on iOS 12. Let me know if you're having the same issue. It just doesn't seem to want to let me log in here. So I'll wait a second. You can see just nothing appears. So. Twitter's having issues for me on this first beta. Let me know if you're having that issue on the iPhone 6. What about YouTube? So going into YouTube, you can see YouTube is now loaded. So again, it just takes a slight second longer to load over, you know, anything that's from like 2016 and newer. So going through some menus, nothing here. But like again, it's perfectly serviceable. You can still definitely use this device. So hitting Amazon. You can see Amazon is now loaded up. No thanks, I don't want notifications. Let's search for maybe an iPhone. Search for an iPhone and see how this performs. Let's go into this iPhone, for example. And you can see, give it a second. See that, that, that load time, it just takes some time, but you can get in there. What about eBay? And again, with the third party apps, just taking that little bit of time to load up. And there it goes. We are now in eBay right there. Let's go into Chrome, see how Chrome performs. And Chrome, let's hit accept and continue. We'll just hit no thanks for now. And don't allow, and let's just hit YouTube, for example, on this one. And you can see it loads up just fine right there. Let's go ahead and open another tab. And let's go into Instagram on here. And you can see loads up just fine. So it works. Let's go into Netflix. And Netflix is loaded up here. Don't allow. And there we go. So again, the load times just take a second longer. Let's head into this game Jetpack Joyride and see how this performs. We got this new, this little notification due to the UA, you know, that little privacy policy thing that came up where applications have to be a lot more transparent than they ever were before. You can see here it goes. On basic games, it should load fine. Again, it's not that snap your finger instantaneous fast, but it should load up fine. Now, one thing I have noticed about the iPhone 6 is that, you know, it gets a really warm under gaming or even under any stress. Like when you're opening multiple applications, it gets really hot, this phone. So Slither, you can see Slither. I mean, this game would have been instantaneous even on this iPhone 6s. So this phone, this phone definitely showing its age, even on iOS 12. What about Geekbench? And you can see Geekbench, there you go. 1.40 gigahertz, less than a gig of RAM available. That's probably why it's a little bit delayed. So we're gonna go into video shop and you've seen there was a little bit of a stutter there when it opened. And then remember, this is a brand new iPhone. So what about Safari? And you can see I did open up multiple tabs here 
on Safari. I'm going to reload them and then we'll do that in a separate section so you can see what it's like to use multiple tabs and then trying to hop in between them on an iPhone 6 in 2018. All right, so I loaded up all of these applications or all these websites in the Safari just to see the performance between running through a bunch of stuff. You want to be doing things on multiple tabs sometimes in the internet. So going here, you can see that was loaded up and ready to go. What about apple.com? You can see it's loaded up and ready to go. Again, I loaded these before I just did this little test. So this needed a reload. So my nickackermanchannel.com powered by Wix needed a reload. So you can see definitely took some time right there. That's my website. Let's go into the let's go into the next one, cnet.com. You can see we're getting another reload. So this is where, you know, an iPhone with more RAM or a newer processor, if that is, is way faster. So if you're running through multiple tabs, like if you have a bunch of tabs in your Safari, don't expect to go back in your iPhone 6 and for them all to be loaded. You're going to be waiting a second for some reloads. And you could see again, Yahoo was not ready to go. So this is where, you know, performance is so much faster on a newer iPhone is in Safari, specifically when you have multiple tabs open. OK, so you can see all the applications are open. We're going to go ahead and run back through them to see if they get any reloads. So Safari was ready. Let's go into video shop. And right off the bat, we have a reload on video shop. Let's go into Geekbench. That's ready. What about Slither? Another reload here for Slither. And one gig of RAM, I don't expect it to be a powerhouse performer here, at least on the RAM management. And here we go for Jetpack Joyride, another reload. We don't even have to wait on that. Netflix, you can see another reload there. Chrome, reload there. I'm not even going to wait on them if they're reloading. eBay, yep, another reload there. Amazon, another reload. I don't think it's holding pretty much anything. YouTube screenshotted and now it had to refresh. Let's go into Twitter. That was pretty decent. Let's go into Instagram. Refreshing, reloading here for Instagram. So you can see multiple applications open. You don't have that fluid hopping in and out of applications performance like you get on any 2018 phone here. Even with iOS 12, at least beta one. Again, not conclusive because it's beta one, but I'm pretty sure the iPhone 6 is never gonna be able to hold multiple applications when you have less than one gigabyte of RAM operating at most times. So you can see Geekbench most times. Now, Apple did claim the apps are gonna open much faster, but that might just be, you know, when you tap it for it to load, it doesn't mean it's gonna hold all these applications in the background. So that's it between the iPhone 6, a little bit longer than our usual video, but at the same time, I wanted to hop in the applications actually in them to see how they actually perform. And you've seen that it's not too quick, but at the same time, it's about the same as 11.4, if not a little bit better than that, which is a good sign for a beta one. But overall, I think the iPhone 6 is still pretty slow. And I know some people are gonna say you're a hater just because I'm calling it like I see it. The phone right now, it's just not one I would recommend to buy, but if you have or own an iPhone 6 right now, I think you have some good signs to come for iOS 12 if you are gonna be keeping this phone for at least another year or two. What are your thoughts on iOS 12 for the iPhone 6 so far? Comment your thoughts down below. Nick here helping you to master your technology. Be sure to be well. Thank you very much for watching. I will catch you all in the next episode and peace.